All right, let's talk about the UFC. UFC had a show, UFC Vegas 97. Sean Brady took on Gilbert Burns in your welterweight main event. And BC, I would call that fight tough, but ultimately a deserved win for Sean Brady uh, and against a very scrappy Gilbert Burns. We'll have a question that we want to answer about Gilbert Burns a little bit later, but my first question to you would be, did Sean Brady prove with this performance that he's a legitimate title contender at welterweight? He absolutely did. This was, in my opinion, short of a, a dominant finish, you know, because, look, when you're in a test like this, and this was a, a point of no return test to find out, is he coming or going for real? And, you know, loss wouldn't have ended his career, but he needed to answer certain questions that really came up from that, that Bilal loss. I think he answered those. You need a little bit of pushback from the guy across from you without question to really prove these. And I think he got that. And I think most importantly, Sean Brady took some clean shots, stood in there, landed some decent counter strikes. Obviously, the, the, that's not the, the bread and butter of his game. But I think he put the best he can, the complete game together in over five rounds, never withered, never fell apart. Little wobble here, a little clean punch there. But Luke, we already know what he can do when his A game is working. The questions about Sean Brady is what can he do when he's either behind in a fight or or when he has to show a little bit more. I think he got enough pushback from a very dangerous and elite guy. Obviously not the best version ever of Gilbert Burns, but still a guy that could hurt him and finish him. If Sean Brady was who the critics of his performance against Bilal say he was, he probably would have got stopped in the in the championship rounds against Gilbert here. But instead, he leaned on his strengths, leaned on his crazy conditioning and motor. And I really think he he really shut everybody up. Now, we still don't know, can he get over the top? Can he, can he climb to the top of that mountain and do it? But I don't think he's going to implode on the way there. This was that performance that he needed to get critics off his back. And now we can sit down and actually go, okay, how does he match up against the best? What does it look like against Shavka, a guy? What does he look like against Bilal? Those are the type of fights he's going to obviously have to win to fulfill this potential. But I think this just put away any of those like, oh, he's not ready for prime time. He's not made for this. This guy's legit, and he proved down on the Saturday. I, I think I would say I j very much agree with a, a, a lot of that. This, to me, was a tough fight for Sean Brady, but obviously he got the, the job done. Some of the stats, though, kind of tell you accumulatively what he did was really impressive. He scored 130 significant strikes to Gilbert's just 47, so it'd be nearly tripling his output. And, and if, you, if someone told you that ahead of time, you wouldn't have thought that, right? You would have thought that he would have really had to win this on the ground. Which he did as well, getting seven takedowns. Now, Gilbert got one, but he got seven. Granted, of 17, but he got one in almost every round, one in round one, nothing in round two, but he got one in round three, two in round four, and then three in round five. Really put an exclamation point on the end. I'll tell you personally what I thought was the most impressive part about it. One, his cardio. I wasn't sure how it was going to look in rounds four and five. We said going into that fight, we knew Gilbert Burns was much more battle tested. Mm -hmm. And I think you saw some evidence of that. He was not overwhelmed by the moment per se, but for Sean Brady to still have the energy to really make sure that he escalated his performance as the rounds went on, I thought was critical that he did I that. I mean, he can, he he's, at the, he's fit enough almost in a, almost in a Marab sense where you're like, that's a weapon. That's a part of his game that is a weapon. In fairness, I think Marab's a little unique. Well, but... Marab is the top of that chain, but yeah. I'm saying he fits in that category and he's showing it to you where it's not just, oh, look, he's game for five rounds. He's going to be able to put that pace on people, Luke, that changes the dynamics of a fight. It's just so difficult to deal with a guy who we've talked to other fighters and they're like, you cannot believe how strong this guy is. And he's putting 17 takedown attempts on you through the course of uh, 25 minutes, plus a few wrestling scrambles, Plus, you know, constantly having to take top position and hold it or fight the hands if Gilbert got on top or whatever. Like, just constantly going through work, a very laborious effort. I think that's actually pretty important. The second thing I'd say is he really clearly stuck to a very good game plan. They were trying to smother Gilbert Burns with offense, either by controlling him physically and getting on top or to the back, or blitzing forward to get him to cover up, then make chest-to-chest -chest contact with him or, you know, get to the back, but some kind of, some kind of covering contact and then push him against the fence, hold him, take him down, whatever whatever they could. They didn't want Gilbert to really ever get going. Yeah, I thought, generally speaking, he did a very good job of that, which is not so easy to do, in part because Gilbert has been in so many of these situations. Well, and, his, and the one thing I'll say about Gilbert, we're going to talk about his age in a minute. Sure. I thought his defensive wrestling and his scrambling in this fight was actually pretty good. Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And that's why he, I think Brady got enough of a pushback where you were going to learn the questions that you needed answering. And if Brady wasn't who he ended up showing himself, I think he would have fallen apart or had some troubles there. But look, I mean, when you can weaponize that cardio, it just, it basically, in this case, when you had an older opponent whose output was less than it would have been in his prime, right? 
I think it really puts guys like Gilbert in a spot here where it's like, am I going to risk gassing myself out trying to compete with what this guy's giving me? And I think when Brady was allowed to establish that as that's the base we're working with here, it, it, it didn't become hard for him to get those striking numbers. But he also, Luke, what was the biggest question we asked of him coming in? Show us more with the striking. Show us you can be dangerous. He was not there dropping combinations and dropping Gilbert, but I think he was landing some pretty stiff shots and also some creative shots from certain distances or certain setups where I don't think, I think it surprised Gilbert. I think Gilbert was genuinely surprised at times where Brady is still in progress of building to round out his game, a striking that can not just complement the wrestling, but become a legit threat to people. Not there yet, but even though he's kind of both a work in progress and walking into true title contention for the first time, I think there's more room to grow, and I think this was enough growth where you're like, okay, he's 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 cut, shut down those holes in his game. Now, can he? How long can he carry out this A game against these elite guys? How many of these elite guys can he do what he did to Gilbert, which is make Gilbert fight his pace on his rules and his terms? That's what allowed uh, Brady the room to really start to do this and open up the striking and add more to his game. But he does have to have that control, doesn't he? We've never seen him win a fight where he wasn't in in full yes. or at least firm control of that. Yes, I think so. I mean, it would depend on the quality of the opponent. But at this point, given who he's going to be fighting, yes, the answer is there. I will say, if you look at the stats one more time, in four of the five rounds, Sean Brady held Gilbert to single-digit strikes landed. Six in the first round, eight in round two, seven in round four, and nine in round five. That is very, very difficult to do. The one thing I will say that I do think is an area for continued improvement, now I agree with you, I think the leg kicks of Sean Brady, to an extent, the body kicks as well. The jab at times I thought was really good for him. And you saw some of those blitzing combos. These are all very good things. I still think there's another layer or two that he can build towards yes. to really weaponizing the striking to make it less utilitarian and more like, you know, kind of tallying in the score and more like the damage that has a noticeable effect on how the opponent performs ultimately in the end. I think that's a, a, a stage... Maybe he hasn't quite hit yet, but I do agree with you. Losing to Bilal was not great. However, Bilal became champion thereafter. He goes and runs over Kelvin Gastelum like it was nothing. And here he takes on a very battle-tested Gilbert and showed a ton of new wrinkles. To me, this guy absolutely, I think, showed he can contend for a title in this division. Do you echo what I said that he showed me enough with his chin and holding off any form of implosion that, let's say it was Shavkat he had to fight next, which won't be, but let's say it was. I mean, are you fearful of him going in there and get picked in apart and getting stopped? Did he do enough in the re in the recuperative showing to give you more confidence in his game? Moving so forward? Shavkat is a unique test. I think you would agree with that. Sure. I don't think anybody comes out of a Shavkat fight unscathed. I just don't. I think everybody, win or lose, win or lose, that's a tough fight where you're, you're just going to, it's going to be a dog fight at times. I would say Sean Brady's got some of the skills you would really want to have to minimize some of those things. And so I do I think if he really had a good game plan and executed it on it, could he withstand whatever shock Shavkat gives him and then obviously, you know, get his hand raised or perform quite ably? Yes. But at the same time, that's a risky fight for literally sure. every single I, welterweight. I guess I'm just happy because, you know, Sean Brady's easy to like. We met him, we had him on the room service diaries. He fit in with what we, you know, and the way we vibe. So it's easy to cheer for him. But I think the biggest thing I picked up from talking to him on camera at length and off camera just shooting the shit is like, I mean, we already know this by his physical conditioning and the way physically how he looks. He's built like a brick shit house. But Luke, I mean, he is all the fuck in on trying to be the best he can. And I know that sounds well, okay, he's a professional, he should be. It's not always the case across the board, especially not on almost like this psychotic level he has of, of CrossFit and, and of just going to like extreme endurance sports. He told us he's just like addicted to that. But, uh, you know, some guys have so many things that are great and could be stars but they are missing that one thing, whether it's chin or whether it's something that's just, I mean, like an American is always the example. Someone that's something that they can't fix, but you're like, damn, every other category, it's uh, it's a pleasure to watch this guy. He's dynamic. It's good to see a guy be able to to shut down the, the questions against him. And when you know how hard he works and how hard he wants it, this guy belongs among the elite in whatever division he's going to go in because you could tell he's committed and puts in that work. So it's really nice to see the rest of that game coming together with that. Part of a natural process of newer talent feasting off of the older ones and that then taking their spot. It's just how the fight game works. Let's talk about what should be next for Sean. Then I want to talk about Gilbert. 
He calls out Ian Gary. They apparently have the same manager. Yeah, what was the way he called it out first? It was hilarious. He called him Ian Magado Cherry. That is just, <laughs> it, was, it was accidental, right? It was brilliant. Totally. Dude, the guy was just fist fighting yeah. for 25 minutes. <laughs> Cut him a break. No, I didn't know if that was like his planned, like. Oh, he should lean into it. Whatever, yeah. Ian Magado Cherry. Uh, great call out. Perfect call out. The, I mean, really, because you would say that Magado Cherry needs, <laughs> I mean, he, he certainly needs, even though he's been coming on, man. And I really like the wins. That's your new together. name. I was like, that's your new name. You're just now Magado Cherry over there. Yeah, yeah, for I'll sure. Take it. <laughs> uh, we can't talk about that on camera. All right, all right. So back to this. Um, my, by the way, one day we'll get a Patreon show, Luke, where we can just spew absolute bullshit and then get just throw feces and out then the window. Lose our jobs. Yeah. Um, I like that because you know, Gary still has some questions to answer. He's further along in the process than Sean Brady. I like the wins he's putting together. I like the maturity and the evolution in his game each time. But there'd be a lot of energy in this fight. There'd be a lot of like, you know, uh, I'm, this is my moment to prove myself to then catapult to the title position. And if Sean Brady is starting to knock on that door, these are the names he should want and go after. So him calling it out like that, I, dude, I'm into that. I'm, I'm into really it. Into I'm into it. it for just a separate reason. Ian, Ian, Ian Cherry, mm-hmm. the Magado, avocado, tomato. He loves to fight a particular way, which is very long range, sticking and moving, lateral movement, cutting angles, getting out of the way. Doesn't want to be super close to anybody, which is the opposite of how Sean Brady fights. Sean Brady wants to get his hands on you. Perfect contrast, yeah. Exactly. And so in either case, somebody has to solve a very specific kind of technical challenge that actually tells you a lot about how far they can go. It doesn't mean if if one loses to Sean Brady or Ian Magado Cherry that, (laughs) that, that no upside is possible. But I am saying whoever does solve that is solving a very, very real and difficult riddle. For that reason alone, I want to see it. I don't know how much of a grudge match the fans perceive it as, but I love that. I think it would be an intense build. I think you'd see, you know, not not trash talk for the sake of it. You'd see two guys, like I said, the energy would be high in that fight because it would mean so much. What do you think the line would be? What do you think it should be? Because I would, you, I wait, are say, you as high on Gary as I am at the moment? Where I think no, you're not. Okay, no. okay. I do think he's skilled and talented, and I think some of the hate he gets is just from underfuck dudes who or under who don't have a life. Underinformed dudes who believe that his wife's ex husband yeah, no. was living. Those in their are house, dudes. You know? Those are dudes who have never felt the loving embrace of a woman, and they are obsessed with okay, the let's be with, fair. with other people's some lives. Some have. But they paid for it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right? And there's a line in the sand of people, yes. Luke. Okay. Which side are you on, folks? That's okay. the question out to you. Are you All right. the... Fair correction. Yeah. It also involves people who pay for prostitutes. Okay, but that aside, um, I did not think he looked super impressive in his last contest. And I don't think his grappling more generally has been super impressive to me. He's got to answer he's got to answer more questions about the ground, but I don't know, man. There, there, he seems to Get better in each fight. In he a does get better. Bit no, no, no. Incrementally. I'm not saying. Yeah, this is not me saying he's a scrub. That's not me saying that. I do agree. He gets better over time. This is why the fight is intriguing because I actually see there are different ages, but they're pretty much like I'm not gonna say collision course, but they're still both elevating their game yeah. at a really interesting they time. Desperately want to be great too. That's why I think it would be such a great fight. Would answer a lot about where each are at. Does it make sense when you look at the top of the division and who is scheduled to get next? Who should get next? I mean, it's got to be Shavkat next, right? For the title. Yes. I don't see how it's not. I mean, this whole shit about, like, Kamaru fighting him seems like a monumental waste of time. Dude, I, yes. I, I, I brought this up. I was talking to Long Island Luke about this before the show. I did a tape study on Bilal, and I, I said it before. How did he beat Leon? Because I was like, how did he get these takedowns, and then Kamaru couldn't in the third Leon fight? And then you go and you watch, and it's not just a technical strategy difference, because although that is part of it, but there's times where Leon, or excuse me, Kamaru just kind of falls into a takedown because he cannot explode anymore to achieve like a, the position in a firm kind of way. Oh my God, dude. Like I just like, you can't beat really elite guys doing that. You know, as good I as Kamaru has been and is no, I don't have any. What, what, in was that. there a turning? Like what was the turning point that Kamaru went from legitimately being the number one pound for pound guy and a guy that we were like, is he going to catch GSP? Is he going to like, yeah. is he going to be a top 10 fighter all the time? And Aftermarket, obviously still dangerous in any given matchup. He, you know, he didn't embarrass himself against uh, Chimaev by any means. Still has something, but what was that turning point where he lost it? Well, age is, age is a motherfucker, um, so that's part of it. He got old, and you can get old very quickly, too. I mean, you could say, is it the People, high kick? Is it the high kick from Leon? The high was kick the was certainly didn't help things, but this is something that if you've not watched fights for lo- very long, and when I say very long, I mean five years or less is not very long. If you've watched fights long enough, what you really begin to see is that there's a, there's a lot of telltale signs about when somebody is old, one of which we'll talk about with Gilbert in a second. 
But the other thing you'll say is sometimes in the fight game, not all the time, but sometimes guys just get old overnight. It goes, there's one fight where there's a difference and they never are able to recover. Could the head kick have facilitated that kind of I think the head kick pushed him process? over. Do you believe that, you know, because he had critics along the way while we were trying to basically fit his head for the crown of being like a top 10 fighter and an all-time great. There were the critics that were saying, okay, he's been looking great lately, but like he's beating Jorge twice, an older version of Jorge, and he's beating uh, Colby twice. And I, you know, I always push back against him. Like the first Colby fight was, you know, I mean, the second fight was close too, but the first Colby fight was an absolute war. Do you look at maybe he got old earlier than we realized, but was but wasn't wrestling as much and, and didn't show it as much? Partly because he was leaning into the striking. I, I'd have more? to go back and look at the tape more closely to really be able to pinpoint it. Yeah. But at, 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 what I can comfortably say is, at this stage, I think that's a waste of time. As good as Kamaru has been, second best welterweight I think of all time. I do I do believe that. Um, okay, but getting back to this question now about Gilbert. Here was my read. My read was that he made this more competitive than the statistics and the ultimately the scorecards showed. I thought in particular his defensive wrestling and scrambling or the ability to reverse position on the ground was excellent yes. and really made Sean Brady work for it. However, Gilbert is 38 years old. I believe I got that right. Double check that long. He is, he is yeah, 38. He's 38. It looked to me part of what was happening, BC, was that we talked about the smothering effect that they wanted to have on him physically, but also with the striking, and I think that played a role. However, he looked to me, and I, we have great respect for Gilbert Burns, he looked hesitant to throw to me. Yeah. And that is one of those signs that it's like, why aren't you throwing more? When, whenever you're asking about a fighter, why aren't they throwing more? If they're not injured, the next question you need to ask yourself is how old are they? He's 38. Well, that is 38 at welterweight is is not it young. Is. I think that that definitely played a big I role. I agree. I think I may just come to the ending point a little bit differently where I say, okay, the first telltale sign is obviously a lowered amount of output. And that's what happens to a lot of aging great fighters and you become more efficient. And he's done that. He's had to become more efficient and look to load up. Even when you look at the Jack Della Maddalena fight of what he was winning, you know, with 145 to go in the third round was winning two rounds to nothing on two of the three scorecards. It was Jack that was getting the better of him with the jabs and the combos, but Gilbert was just landing smashing harder, telling shots on the in-between. Well-timed, what have you, but there wasn't the threat of the takedown for him. So I think he was able in that one to balance out what was left of this stamina that he has on this level. He's fighting only tough guys. Obviously, if you if you run down his last 10 opponents, it might be better than any other name you can pick. He's just one of those guys that are fighting best after best after best in line next. I think in a matchup like this, because he's getting older, he has to pick his poison of of the, the 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 gas tank loop, the jar. It's not full anymore. So he has to pick his poison a little bit more on where he puts his energy. And I think in order to compete with these younger guys, especially a guy like Brady, who's all gas and no brakes, Luke, he had to put it in the areas that you praised him. In the in the defensive takedown stoppage, in the in the scrambling on the ground, in everything to not get overwhelmed by this guy that when what had to suffer the amount of energy he has in the striking. And I also think when he got Brady putting on such a pace to him, if you're going to try to strike on that level at that pace, you're going to gas out. And that's why we saw him have to be more judicious on there. So this is that telltale sign. He's at that point where he can give the wrong young guy a tough night, especially even a, a, even a riser like like Sean Brady kind of was coming coming off of that Gastelum win where it's like, okay, if Brady wins this, he's going to catapult into the into contention. He still can can stop those guys, whether it's, knock them out to prove that or, or get a close victory. He still has five on stamina, which is not easy to do at 38 with big time mileage, but no, he doesn't have the, the young legs on that level to, you have to, you know, you got to pick your poison and he, he's putting it into defense and he's putting it into the wrestling. And would you say that the grappling purist in you was almost erect watching some of those transitions? That was elite shit back and forth. They were trying harder on the ground than when two guys have great ground games typically try to do, right? You're more often to get a, or not more often, but you get a lot of Covington versus Usman part ones where they're like, yeah, let's just punt on the wrestling and, and yeah. kickbox this no, whole time. No, they, they went after it. They went after it and tried to one-up each other, so that takes a lot of energy at 38 to do. Gilbert is so smart that he can still compete, but he's done competing for the title. Let's be fair enough. I think that's probably accurate. I don't know how, how, how much more you can say it. I think you're right. If Brady had made a couple more mistakes, maybe it's a different fight. Or you what, get... what about BMF for, for Gilbert? 38, I still think, is a little old for that. But I wouldn't be super opposed. But I don't think he's the right candidate Because if anyway. you put the BMF stamp on a fight, everyone 
expects to go in there and brawl. Right? I will tell you, like we didn't really discuss it on this show. It's something I've talked about a little bit on my live chat, which is one thing that you were gone for. You were on vacation when ADCC and CJI happened. Sure. Um, something interesting was noteworthy. Jason Nolf, uh, Michael Pixley, some other guys. These are guys who were elite in certain cases anyway, collegiate wrestlers who have no fucking interest in MMA anymore. They just want to make money doing pro grappling. And uh, they're great at it. Like, they're really, really good at it. Like, Michael Pixley is a purple belt, and he submitted Marigali, granted, partly due to an injury, but he threw him, and that's what caused the injury. Like, it was a big deal. My point being is, like, Burns might be able to make some good money doing pro grappling at this point. He's got a big name. He was oh, already- but he's too much left in the MMA tank, to, I think, to need to talk about that. Well, okay, you're 38. How much more brain okay. damage? Hold on, hold on. The, how much more brain damage is key? But but his contemporaries, like RDA, these other Brazilian legends who are still at it and still hard. To, even Shogun put on, like, a five-fight win Dude, streak. Shogun, at life. Shogun's got enough CTE for I'm not all saying it's not Brazil. true. But he, and the, his life in later stages is going is if they you're only not, know one way. If, you, if you're not concerned about what's going to happen to him later on in life, I don't know what to tell you. I'm he I'm using him as an example problem. of the saying, worst example imaginable. Okay, how about Glover? A better example, a guy who didn't take as much danger or, dry, or as much stri- Fair damage. Enough, but he but was a good striker. He fought till he fought till these guys are 40, able to linger 41. a lot through the combination of smarts and just sick toughness. Gilbert and is all smart. That. Gilbert is self aware. I agree with all that. I'm just saying if you can make 75k. In a grappling match with no brain damage for something you're already very uh, good at. That's fair. Why would you, like, just at least consider your options at a bare minimum? At least cons-